Mark. How you doing? You know, another day at the office. You nervous? About what? Exactly. Uh, this is a team title match because it has to be. How do we feel about the smack talk that Shmo's been talking so far? Uh, I personally not that worried about it. I actually beat Mark Ellis in a match before. What? JTE is the winner! Dai Wen! Dai Wen is the winner! It's an upset! It's an upset! So when somebody I beat in talks smack to me, it's like, come on, buddy, I already beat you once. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, you know, John Shep called me out and uh, he did. we know what happened there. The queen Ladies the and gentlemen, I can't believe what I am seeing. Like they're going to make a movie about this in 30 years and it's going to be like Rudy, where the real actual true story is just some drunk guy who goes to Notre Dame frat party still. They failed their way to the top and now the top is going to be a nice crescendo waterfall and they're going to plummet to their untimely death. Uh, first we face Campy and Tiffany. Beat them. Your winners, team <laughs> box office uh, yeah. breakdown. And then I believe we faced Schnepp and Dennis. Beat them. Oh. Box office breakdown, advancing. Ah. And then we went on and defeated top 10. Beat them. Box office oh breakdown, <laughs> going to the final. Listen, we are always supposed to lose. That's what he's been since the beginning. Right. Everyone, no, everyone doubted you. People doubt me since birth. Since birth. The doctor doubted me when he, once I came out. The road ends here. Sorry. JT, obviously your road is going down. You got all the way up there. Look at me. I got number one contender, and then you got knocked down by Riley. And then you got lucky and beat Dennis and Schnepp. You got lucky and you beat John Campia and Tiffany. And you got so lucky when you beat Roca and Nost. The luck stops here. We are the gatekeepers. We are the ones. We are Zool saying, get lost. I'm surprised they made it in life this far. How confident are we that we're going to win this match and take the titles? I'll let you take this one for this time. A zillion percent. <laughs> Say it again? A zillion percent. A zillion. A zillion. I didn't even know that. I didn't know that number existed until he just said it. Yeah. So that's, I'm pretty confident right now. There's no need for shouting. There's no need right. to get all up in arms. It's just, you need to set your goals realistic. For all you kids out there watching, if you're like a Finstock or a JT, maybe like a middle management job at your local fast food eatery is the right play for you in life. Not everybody can be a champion. See if you can pronounce this, JT. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Schmodown Movie Trivia Competition. <laughs> I'm joined here by my cohort, Mr. John Roca. How's John, it going, everybody? We have what has been months and yeah. months and months in the making, finally, the team championship. It comes down to this. Some things are worth the wait, and I think this has been worth the wait. Two amazing teams going at it. One, of course, the Schmoes. The other one, a surprise entry. Team B.O.B., Team Box Office Breakdown, I did not see that coming, even when they beat us. But that seems to be their strength, right? Yeah. Both JTE and Finstock seem to come out of nowhere. Yeah. They lull you to sleep by this facade of stupidity they wear over them like shrouds Agreed. of Turin. Agreed. And then they come out and bite you right in the ass. They do. And as far as the schmoes, look, it is amazing how far both of these guys have come in the last three years since they first came groveling to me for jobs. I, I am it's too. It's amazing. Very shocked. So, look. Listen, we've we got these two teams. We've yeah. been waiting for months now to come out of here. Yes. We've seen a path that both of them have taken to glory. They've beaten some great competitors along the way. That's right. And now we're here. Who do you got in this? You know, it's a tough decision. There's a lot of positives and and, uh, and, flaw, and strengths and, and negatives in both teams. But for me, I got to go with the home team. I got to go with Team Schmoes. I don't believe in Team B.O.B. I think they're that bunny rabbit in the Holy Grail. You just don't see it coming. <laughs> All of a sudden, it's gnawing on your neck. But I think these guys have the right swords to kill them. I'm going to create a brand new T-shirt. Yeah. I believe in B.O.B. Oh! I'm actually by the slightest of margins. Wow. I am out of the business of counting these guys out. I yeah. think they're going to shock the world tonight and take these titles home. All right, John, let's take a look at the tail of the tape on these two teams. Wow, Christian Harloff, Mark Ellis, a lot of strengths there. They know a lot about movies. They go to a lot of red carpets, a lot of Q&As. Team B.O.B., I don't know. I don't ever see them in red carpets. I don't see what they're good. Oh, Stallone movies. Yes, they're very good at Stallone movies. I see them in a lot of usual suspect lineups. That's yeah, pretty yeah, much so, it, yes. <laughs> that's right. But they've gotten here on their strength and their ability to pull answers out of their behinds, and so they're here. So we can't count them out. All right, let's, think, let's see what they're saying on Twitter about this insane matchup. 
Thanks guys, it's time for the big leagues. It's Finstock and JT versus the Schmoes. I might be a little bit biased as to who's gonna win, but let's see what you guys are saying in the Twitter universe. Joshua S. Valkers writes, you always go with the team that's built the empire, not the one that's inspired a cult of sock beard fanatics. Bursting. The business writes, no way two schmoes can take down the god Bob Finstock and his disciple of destruction, Schmoes JTE. Of Jared Seeds writes, Planet Harloff Miner will end the loathsome Boblick. Bow down to Schmodown order. Xander Guthrow writes, my prediction for the Schmodown this week, Team Schmoes all the way, and that graphic is golden. This next one comes from Dominic Fitzgerald, and he writes, JT and Finstock have been through a road of trials. The boys are about to bring about the fall of the Schmoes. Hmm, interesting. Well, let's see how it all goes down. Back to you guys. All right. You've been waiting for months, and now you've been waiting for prolonged, agonizing minutes. <laughs> Let's get to the teams. All right, introducing first, Team B-O-B, -B, the challengers. Come on out, boys. Yes. <laughs> Finstock, JTE. Let's take a look. What is this? What is that? A Team Congo belt? Wait, wait, is that? Oh. <laughs> JT, come to intimidate. You can't even see him on the camera. Come closer. All right, way to go. He's oh, reminding everybody he is a champion somewhere. That's right. But oh, he wasn't a champion when he faced Riley. Ouch. Robert <laughs> Loja. Robert Loja. It's called Back to the Future. All right, Team B.O.B., they beat Campia and Tiffany. They shocked Dennis Zhang and, and John Schnepp. And they shocked Team Top 10. That's me and Matt Nost. <laughs> and they're here in the finals. You can't count them out, as John Campia was saying. Where? Where are the schmoes? What the rock is cooking. Oh, there he comes. That's right, Christian Harloff leading out Team Schmoes. I believe this is the only suit Christian Harloff owns. He wore it to his wedding. He's wearing it to the Schmodown Championship, and he'll probably wear it to his funeral. Well, he's got something to say here, John. I'm waiting with bated breath. Finally, Darth Harloff has come back to the Schmodown. Whoa! Woo! Woo! Yeah. A lot of you wake up in the morning and you ask yourself, can I do this? You wake up in the morning and you ask yourself, can I be champion? You wake up in the morning and then you see Harloff and Ellis and you say, no! You can't, because you got JTE, who looks like a busted potato that fell off the back of a truck and kept on rolling down the highway. And then you got Finstock. Let's talk about Finstock. Guy's got so much failure in his mask, he could be a Captain Heigl movie. <laughs> oh! Guy should be on a farm chasing chickens and pigs. You talk about JTE is the people's champion. JTE says it's all about the people. The people. Want someone that doesn't say Guomo del Toro. <laughs> the people want somebody that doesn't sing La Bumba. The people want to go to Jurassic World and not see a Triceratops Tinas Tatas Tops. <laughs> when you ask what BOB stands for, back off, bitch, because here come the Schmoes. Oh! Woo! If you smell la, 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 what the Schmoes are cooking. <laughs> what an intro, what an intro by Christian Harloff to himself. Team Smoes, they beat Team Nerdist, Team Newbie. Now, Mr. Roka, yeah. would you like to introduce Mark Ellis? Yeah, I'd like it to. It doesn't matter what you want to do, because <laughs> it's time to introduce my partner in crime. He is the Mad Dog Baby Carrots, Mark Ellis. Oh. The suspense is killing me here. This is great uh, music cue here leading us I, I, in. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if Mark slept in. I'm, I'm a big fan of the camera movement right now. Yeah. Oh, I know this one. Oh, boy. Woo! Oh, my God. Oh, my. Oh, my. Uh, oh. Pardon the pun, but what the hell is what going heck? on? I gotta be honest with you, John, I expected bigger balls from the devil, but that's surprising. That's a little surprising. <laughs> that is some skin-tight wear he's got there, my lord. 
is definitely a demon of trivia. Mark Ellis. As I was saying, Team Schmoes got here by beating Team Nerdist. Team Newbies, <laughs> Sasha and Miri, Sasha and Miri, and Team Rotten Tomatoes. All right, guys, we're going to burst into round one here. It's a very simple round. Every question correctly answered is worth one point. There are going to be six questions asked per side. So we're going to go off here with Team Schmoes. Please choose category one or category two. We'll go first, right? And we'll go one. You go one, and you would like to uh, receive, or are you going to punt yeah, off? Yeah, we'll go, we'll go first. And, and they're going to take the questions for one. All right. Mark, Mark, will, Mark will take the first three. All Mark right. will lead off. Question number one going to you, Mark El Diablo Ellis. I the already have is, to pee, John. <laughs> <laughs> fittingly, in Bruce Almighty, what is Jim Carrey's occupation? He is a news reporter. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is under the category of movie quotes. Do you have a, what quote, which movie is this quote from? Do you have a bra to match this? Preferably something leather, rubber, or barbed wire? Um, it sounds like a quote from Fletch. Incorrect. The answer we're looking for is weird science. Ooh, Van Halen's song in that. Kelly LeBrock. <laughs> Your third question, under the category of animation, what are the names of the two sisters in Disney's Frozen? Oh, man, it's uh, Elsa and that other broad. Um, Ooh, we can't accept that other broad, unfortunately. Uh, well, I'm, no. I'm thinking about it. Oh, uh, yes, okay. Elsa and uh, Five, I didn't think the broad four, was actually her name. Three, two, one. Elsa and Lila. Uh, so close. Oh. It is actually Elsa and Anna. Ah, Anna. wow. All right. Anna. I just pronounce it differently. Close, but no cigar. <laughs> On to Team B.O.B. Which yeah. one of you is going to answer for you first? Uh, yeah, that would be me. All right. Bob All Finstock. right. Here we go. In the category of comedy, Finstock, you homeless S.O.B. <laughs> Question. In I Love You, Man, what rock band did Paul Rudd and Jason Segel's characters bond over? Oh, wow. One rock you, you band. You've lost in that outfit before, have you? He's taking uh, your time. Take your time. Let him take his time. Uh, that would be. They were in a garage. Five. Uh, I'm four. gonna go ahead and say the Ramones. <laughs> Incorrect. Rush. The answer is Rush. Damn. Ooh, I expected better from the team. Well, Congo I'm just used champ. to. Let's I'm see. I'm just here. used to like my back muscles doing the talking, but now I got to do the regular talking. All right. Category Talk two. Longer. Movie quotes. Name the movie. Quote. You seem a decent fellow. I hate to kill you. You seem a decent fellow. Oh, Easy. I Wait. hate to die. Name the movie? Yes, name the movie. It sounds like something Schwarzenegger First time doing say. this? Uh, let's go with... Hi. Commando. Mm. Uh, so close. Uh, <laughs> the Princess Bride. The Princess Bride. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. It's weird. You, <laughs> you killed my father. Prepare to die. <laughs> <laughs> In question three, here. trying to avoid zero, or category three, rather, animation, trying to avoid zero answers here. Strength. Who voices Esmeralda in Disney's The Hunchback of Notre Dame? It's got to be a chick, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Certainly a lady, Finn's dog, yes. Let's think. The Hunchback of Notre Dame. I really like that movie. Five. Let's Four. go with Julia Roberts. Ooh, I'm sorry, no. The answer is Demi Moore. Nice try. Or I Demi Moore. She was done with whichever way you like to go. All right, we go back over to the Team Schmo side. Christian Harloff, yeah. you will be fielding the next three questions. Yes, sir. In the category of action adventure, what historical document was a coded map found on the back of in National Treasure? Um, Declaration of Independence. Correct. Oh. I mean, there's not that many other historical documents. <laughs> no. <laughs> there's two historical documents. That's it? What was the other one? Under the category of romantic comedy, in the movie Pretty Woman, what is the rule Julia Roberts' character abides by? Won't kiss on the mouth. 
And another correct question mm. for Team Schmoes. He's on a roll. Let's see if he can sweep this going into the final one. Question under the category of dramas. Oh, very serious. Who played, who played the language and speech therapist in The King's Speech? Five, Five, four, four three, three, two. Helena Bonham Carter. Well, she was in the movie. However, we were looking for Jeffrey Rush. Jeffrey Rush. All right, Vinsta. I mean, JTE, are you ready? Bring it on. All right. First in the category of action adventure. Who played the villain Simon Gruger, Gruber in uh -huh. Die Hard with a Vengeance? Uh, Jeremy Irons. Correct. Simon Says. In category five, romantic comedy, something you obviously know a lot about. Uh, Jim Carrey and Zoe Deschanel attend a themed party put on by Jim Carrey's boss in Yes Man. What was the theme of the party? Oh, the party. Okay, shit. Uh, re repeat it one more time. Yeah, Sorry. Sure. Oh, Jim repeat Carrey it. and Zoe Deschanel yep. attend a themed party. Okay. Themed party put on by Jim Carrey's boss in Yes Man. What was the theme of the party? I'll say Harry Potter. Pulls it out. Well, yes. Correct. Yes. JTE. Yeah. And to tie this matchup, going out of the first round, we go to dramas. JTE. Who played Ben Affleck's father, who only appeared once in the movie The Town? I, I know this. Chris Cooper. Boom! Wow! Yes, wow. He nails it! Oh, what an amazing first round. Three to three coming out. Uh, the, sec round, the second round itself has a lot, a lot of potholes for these teams. All right, in this second round, of course, we are going to spin the wheel of fate. Let's get the wheel out here. The lovely Sasha Pearl Raver, please. Yes! Yes. What a beautiful floral pattern. All right, here we go into round two. Team Schmoes, which one of you will spin? First. I'll go first. All right. Christian Harlow. <laughs> I can't see from here, so mm. tell me what it is. Yeah, it was so, war yeah. films, and uh, I think we'll spin again. Okay. Because oh. we wanted the star in front of it. <laughs> oh, All right. Yes. They want okay. us to do war films. All right. All some, right. Some twists of fate you cannot avoid. War films it is, Christian sure. Harlow. Your first question in your category of war films... Alan Turing is the main character of what film set in World War II? Imitation Game. Correct. Oh. Imitation Game, two points. Big answer. Big answer. Question number two. Well what was Chris Kyle's career before he decided to go to war in American Sniper? It's a bull Multiple choice. Multiple choice. Option one, rodeo rider. Option two, horse trainer. Option three, professional gambler. Or option four, ranch foreman. Rodeo rider. Correct, for just one point. <laughs> All right, moving on to the third question in your category. In the movie Fury, what is the nickname given to the newest member of the tank's crew, Norman? Multiple choice. Option number one, Gordo. Option number two, Machine. Option number three, Red. Option number four, Normie. What was the second choice? The second choice was Machine. Machine. Correct for one point. Boom. And yeah. your final question. Question. Robin Williams plays which real life disc jockey in the movie Good Morning Vietnam. We should have had it. Uh, that would be Adrian Cronauer. Uh, unfortunately, that is correct. Yes, for two points. <laughs> All, right. All right, well done. I feel like we should have had one of our special guests read that question for some reason. <laughs> All right, All right we got Finn first? Scott. Finstock uh, is going to be Bob. spinning for B.O.B. Bob Finstock. It's a cute little spin. Ooh, 90s, 90s movies. Will you keep it or will you defer? He's going to spin again. Okay. Come on, sports, 
Of course, now he's going to be obligated to answer these for. That was yes. a calculated risk on yes. this part. Ooh. Ooh Coming yeah. of Coming age. Of age. I'm good at that. Something he is not familiar we, with. We Let's see. <laughs> Finstock, all right. <laughs> Finstock, are you ready? I'm born ready. Oh, yeah. Yes, I can tell by that Congo belt. All right, yeah. what is the name of the high school football team that is the prime focus in Friday Night Lights, the movie? The movie? Hmm. Uh, let's go multiple choice here. All right. Is it A, South Kingstown Rebels, B, Compton Comets, C, Permian Panthers, or D, Toledo Rockets? I think it's... Uh... A. That is incorrect. Do you want we to have steal? Our first yeah. option for yeah. a steal. What yep. were the, so give us the, uh, the options, please. A, South Kingstown Rebels, B, Compton Comets, C, Permian Panthers, or D, Toledo Rockets. Uh, do you think Toledo is in Texas? <laughs> I know Toledo and Compton are in other places. I've never heard of the P one. Right, take a shot. You want to take a shot at Toledo? All right, your fault. We're going to go with C. C? Which Just is, to clarify, are you are you going for C or are you going for Toledo? We're going for the Panthers. The Permian Panthers is right. Ah, well done. Well done. Oh. Finstock, mm -hmm. for your second question in this category, the climax of Rebel Without a Cause, starring James Dean, takes place at which popular Hollywood landmark? That would be... Uh, the Griffith Observatory. Wow. That is correct. Correct for two points. Way to go. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Whoa. impressed. That was a tough one. He well always done. finds a way to pull those miracles out Oof. of his butt. All right, the third one. Are you ready? In American Graffiti, who is Richard Dreyfus looking for throughout the film? Wow. Uh, is it you looking for a character name or? No, no, yeah, like what are you looking for? Uh, a description. Oh, um, you know, multiple choice. All right. Is it A, a beautiful blonde woman in a Thunderbird, B, the radio station DJ, C, his sister, or D, the redheaded woman he saw in the restaurant? Is this the last question? No. Uh, this would be B. Which one? Is, I'm sorry? The answer is B. B? Do you want to steal? That is incorrect. Yes, we do. Uh, the answer is A. A correct. is correct. The beautiful blonde woman in the Thunderbird. 11 to 5. Here we go. Question 4. Finstock, are you ready? Yes. How do the students show their support for Mr. Keating <laughs> at the end of Dead Poets Society? Yeah, we're yeah, coming. They all stand up on their desks. That is correct. correct. Two That's good, much, much needed points. Very important points. <laughs> much <laughs> needed points. <laughs> 11 to 7. <laughs> all right, and now on? we go over to Mark Ellis. To I'll defer to uh, Muscles to spin for me. Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Mm hmm? You got to spin. Yeah, I feel like oh, this. Oh, I feel Finstock like is calling uh, in a any, point any, any of edge. rule. Yes, this any edge he gets. This could, this could change things. He, he didn't answer many questions right, but he's got this right. Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. Star Wars! Oh! Wow! <laughs> Mark Ellis, uh, channeling the devil. Star Wars shouldn't be on the Brings board. out Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> These like are the Sasha movies with Pearl the uh, with the Captain Kirk team. in it. JT <laughs> hates Star Wars. I, I hate it. The back. Okay. All right, Mark Ellis, your first question under the fortuitous category of Star Wars. <laughs> Who was in charge of all Rebel fleet operations during the second Death Star battle? Um. Let me go multiple choice, please. All right, is it A? Princess Leia, B, Admiral Akbar, C, Lando Calrissian, or D, Mon Mothma. I'm gonna go with Admiral Akbar. Correct. Oh. I, I thought you meant the uh, the other team, the Galactic Empire. I knew Akbar. <laughs> I, I would have went, went with Forrest Whitaker. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Your second question under the category of Star Wars: How many parsecs did Han Solo well, do? In the Kessel Run. The answer is going to be 12, John. Correct. Two points Whoa. for 12. It wasn't 14 like The Force Awakens, kids will have you believe. <laughs> Your third question in the Star Wars category. What rebel fell overboard off a small sand skiff near the Sarlacc pit in Return of the Jedi? 
uh, fell overboard? Correct. Uh, that would be uh, Lando Calrissian. Also correct. Yes. For two more points. And the correct, correct pronunciation of his name. All right, next. <laughs> <laughs> Your final question in the Star Wars category. On which planet were the clones created in Episode 2, Attack of the Clones? Um, I'm going to go to my good friend Christian George Harwell. All right. Camino. Correct. Camino. For two points. Oh, I my. mean, I knew it, too. I just wanted to let you participate. All right. Now, the spinning of the wheel goes over to JTE. <laughs> JTE. Of course, in his second title fight here, yeah. actually, in almost as many weeks. That's right. Very impressive feat. We're looking at 18 to 7. This is, he's going to need these yeah. eight points to bring the team close. Sandra Bullock movies. That's a no. All right. All right. All right. What a He's sexist. taking a pass on Sandra Bullock. I might have took that. Just like Jesse James. Oh, 90s. 90s movies. He's good. He's a 90s kid. All right. Kid. Your son was born in 99. Is that correct? 89, sir. <laughs> All right, JT. He was 12 when he had him. Thank you. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. Who played Lancelot in First Night? Richard Gere. Correct. Correct. Who plays the title role in the 1995 re remake of Sabrina? Who plays the title role of Sabrina? In the 1995 oh, remake. Harrison Ford, who were you with in that movie? Is it Melanie Griffin? <laughs> no, would you no. like to steal? Julia Ramond. Correct, two correct. points yeah. stolen. Yeah. Remember that you... Yeah. This Remember could have been a significant moment in the... In I, the believe, I believe you're, you're looking, looking for Melanie choice. Griffith. What was I the Is the way you pronounce <laughs> it. Okay. I'll believe... I trust you. <laughs> JT, don't forget that you do get multiple yeah, choice. Know. All right. Which 1997 film features Cyrus the Virus, Diamond Dog, Con Air. and Johnny 23? What's that? Con Air. Yeah, correct. <laughs> Judging All by right. the way you're dressed, that I movie almost want to give him an life. extra point for answering so fast. Yes. However, we cannot. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Your last question in this category of 90s movies, JT. How does Dave discover Link in Encino Man? And you can confer in case you don't know. I know the answer. He's digging his own uh, swimming pool in his backyard, and that's how he finds him. Correct. Correct. We'll take that answer. All right, entering into round three. After those two thrilling rounds, it is 20 to 13. Schmo's on top. And this is, they're going to start spinning the wheel. This is for betting, for points. This could be a huge comeback for Team B.O.B. What is significant in this round is not only are you wagering how many points you think you can gain, but how many points do you think you could actually afford losing? Yes. A massive swing here. Now, we've got a little bit of a margin going between these two yes. teams right now. But after this round alone, Team B.O.B. could be right back in the lead. Yes, absolutely. Let's see what they've got. All right, guys, a lot can happen in round three, and this is how it goes. One of the competitors will spin the wheel, and we will come up with a category. It must be a category that has not already been addressed in the match. In round two, right. Once the team see what the category is, they have the option to write down on a piece of paper that they will give to the lovely Sasha of how many points they wish to bet. That's right. The team in the lead, in this case being Team Schmodown, they will have the option of writing anywhere between zero to five points that they want to bet. Being behind, Team B.O.B. has the option of betting anywhere between zero to three points. It is important to remember that not only do they stand to win the amount of points they bet, they also stand to lose those points should they get the question wrong. Yes. It's very, it's, this could swing the game completely in Team Schmo's favor, or B.O.B. could make another one of their miracle comebacks. All right, so who is spinning the wheel? And the category is action adventure. Oh my. oh my. Gentlemen, you have a few seconds here to put down how many points you wish to wager. Once again, the Schmoes can wager up to five. Team BOB can wager up to three. This is a category that both of these teams know quite well. It I is. I would be surprised if they both didn't bet the maximum. Well, my middle name's Action Adventure. Hmm. Bob, Action Adventure, Finstock. We shut his mic off. Just saying. <laughs> Okay, we're going to do an edit here. We're picking it back up in three, two. And your question in the category of action adventure. Who played the vice president of the United States in the movie Air Force One? Who played the vice president of the United States in Air Force One? All right, they're right Very down quickly, yeah. the Schmoes right there. And right behind them is Team B.O.B. All right. 
All right, and we are having the results the answer is brought over now. By the lovely Sasha Pearl Raver, yes. All right, so let's start with Sasha's Team looking like Vanna White B.O.B. Team B.O.B., how many points did you wager? We bet three. Three, their maximum amount of points. And what is your answer to the question? Glenn Close. Three points for Team B.O.B. All right, well, going over to the schmoes. Schmoes, how many points did you decide to wager in this category? Three points. You also decided to wager three points. And your answer for the question? Bob Finstock. No, uh, Glenn Close. <laughs> Glenn Close is also correct. Yeah. Wow. It would be funny if it wasn't. Hey. All right, 23 to 16. Mm. No points were, uh, no, no, no ground was made up by Team B.O.B., unfortunately. Unfortunately, they yes. they still survive into the fourth round. Let's see what the fourth round brings us. Now, for those of you that don't know, the fourth round is a, a speed round. We ask the questions. They have four seconds to answer their, the, the answer the question. And how many points should they get, John? Uh, it is one point per correct answer. They do have the option to steal, which will give them a point as well. Here's how it works. We read off the question. The first team to call out their team's name will be given deference to the question. Yes. And then they only have four very quick very speedy seconds yep. to answer the question or else it gets passed on for the opportunity to steal. And if they don't get it right, they lose a point. And they lose a point. So you yes. can have a two-point mm -hmm. swing two in any point. given question. Right. Question number one in the speed round. In 1986's Big Trouble in Little China, the brides of Lo Pan must have what Josh. color eyes? Green. Team B.O.B. Green. Correct. Oh. One point for B.O.B. Question number two. What are the colossal robots in Pacific Rim called? Josh. Josh we go to Team B.O.B.? Uh, Jaegers. Correct. Oh. Mounting their comeback like a mighty steed. Question number three. <laughs> Who is the famous daughter of Norman Bates, the first victim, Janet Lee from Psycho? Once again, who is the famous daughter of Norman Bates' first victim, Janet Lee from Psycho? Three, two, two. One. one. No points right. The answer was Jamie, Jamie Lee Curtis. Curtis. Uh, I, I was going to go with Jane, Jane Mansfield. Go stayed away. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're not losing a point on that one. Question number four. What is Captain America's shield made of? Josh. Okay, Ooh, Team B.O.B. Uh, vibramium. Correct. Whoa. Amazing. Did, Did he say Vibramium? Quick and good. Did he say Vibramium? Vibramium. vibranium. Okay. Yes. I, I was sure. trying to say as quick Conferring. as possible. I, 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 I thought I heard Viberanium, but then I cracked the That's ears. good. That's yes. good. Knowing that it was we JT, assumed he pronounced, it wrong. Assumed he pronounced it wrong, so we gave him the point anyway. All right, All right. Team BOB dominating this round. Final question of the speed round. In Happy Gilmore, what celebrity does Happy get in a Schmose. fight? Schmoes. Uh, Bob Uecker. Incorrect. Incorrect. Oh. Team oh. Bob Barker. Bob Barker. Bob Barker, yeah. Barker. so Schmoes loses a point. Oh. What an amazing turn here. Schmoes loses a they point. They lose the B -B. only answer they were able to answer. Oh. Oh. Just a oh. bit outside. What an amazing comeback. Let's go. One moment. One yeah, moment. Yeah, John, Bob, what do you have? Josh, my phone. This uh, it's a text message just a bit outside. from uh, Christian Harloff's mother. You are an amazing disappointment. Oh, <laughs> that is what Understood. just came. That's, in. My, best bin, that. That's my best spin, Roka. That's my best Schmoes, no, still in the lead. Schmoes, no. Yes, as we enter in the all-important twenty-two and twenty fifth like round. I, it I'm is so still surprised. their match to lose. It is. They are in control of yep. their own destiny. If they answer out, yeah, they win. They However, win. there is now no room for error. Absolutely zero. I, I could not have imagined that it would have been this tight, especially after round three. Yes. Who would have thought we'd be going into round five this tight? You just might be validated for your faith in Team B.O.B. They have put up one of their patented, legendary comebacks, and here they are two points away from catching up to the Schmoes. All right, in the fifth round, each team is asked three questions. One, the first question is worth one point, the second question is worth three points, and the all-important third question is worth five points. They give us three numbers, we correspond to the category and ask those questions. And we will go team by team as they take their turns through this round. All right, starting with Team Schmoes, between 1 and 20, please give me three numbers. 1, 6, and 11. All right, 1, 6, and 11. And which one of you is going to ask, uh, answer the one question I'll, of I'm, one point I'll question? I'll do the one pointer and Mark will do the three. That sounds good. All right, now over to Team BOB. Other than 1, 6, or 11, please select three numbers between 1 and 20. 7, 8, and 19. 
Mm. Seven, eight, and nineteen. Mm. Bold choices. I like the very bold. <laughs> They're good numbers. They're good numbers. Those are good numbers. Those are good numbers. <laughs> All right. Starting off with Christian Harloff for Team Schmoes. Your one point question. You selected the number one. This category is Oscar winner. What is the first sports movie to win Best Picture? Five, four. Rocky. Correct. Amazing. For one point. Christian Hart. <laughs> All right. All right. Over to Team B.O.B. They were. You guys selected is, as your first point question. Who is answering the one point question? Uh, Finstock. Bob Finstock. All right, Bob Finstock. Hey, the category is action adventure. Who played this? Name. Oh, sorry. Oh, yes, okay. Who played the sexy Bond baddie Xenia on a top in Goldeneye? Uh, Goldeneye. That was uh, uh, Denise Richards. Incorrect. Ooh. No, that was Dr. Christmas. That is incorrect. <laughs> Famke Jansen was what we were looking for there. All right, on to the three-point question for the Schmoes. All right, Mark Ellis, you'll be representing Team Schmoes for the three-point question. The second number you guys selected was six, which gives you the category of Sandra Bullock films. Ooh. Done and done. My middle name is Sandra Bullock. <laughs> for three points, in the movie Speed, what was the nickname that Dennis Hopper's character gave to Sandra Bullock? He called her a wildcat, John. Correct oh. for three points. <sighs> Heading into the three-point question Oof. now for Team B.O.B. Here's our scenario. Team B.O.B. is now in a position. Their backs are against the wall. Again. They have to answer the following two questions correctly, and their fate is not in their own hands. They have to hope that the Schmoes get their five-point question wrong. Right. Who and is answering the three-point question for Team B.O.B.? We got J.T.E. J.T.E., JTE? your second number was eight. Your category for eight is, is. romance. Is romance. <laughs> JTE, <laughs> again, again, a chance to keep your team Well, his, na his, the his game. name is the, the, you know, the, uh, the gigolo of Burbank, so. That's right. <laughs> the gigolo All of Burbank. Right. Lower Burbank, let's be real here. All right, JT, are you ready? Yeah, hit me. No pressure. I know you lost no to pressure. Riley, but keep it together. Ah, oh, romance, I hate you. Romance. In love, actually. Which actor falls in love with his non-English speaking housekeeper? All the ladies are exploding right now in the audience. Knowing the answer. <sighs> That's a huge cast. I'm trying to remember the name. I'm going to say, you want the actor's name? Yes, the actor's name is what we're looking for. Colin Firth. Correct! JT! Oh! JT! And oh! they stay alive! Oh! Bring it! All right, Let's we're going to go. We the press six. Team BLB needs to answer this to put the pressure on Team Schmoes. I think that was the most romantic thing JT has ever done. <laughs> <laughs> He's a gigolo of Burbank. <laughs> All right. You on this one. Under yeah. the category of classics. Oh, <laughs> well, I did get the Griffith well, Observ Observatory. <laughs> what is the name of the con that Robert Redford and Paul Newman pulled in The Sting? Once again, what is the name of the con that Robert Redford and Paul Newman pulled in The Sting. They can confer on yes, this. Yes, they can. You know, it's an important five-point question. It's like watching two squirrels gather an acorn. Hold on, hold on. we got time for this. Get up I, I fell victim to this already one time in a final round. All right. Finstock pulled it out. Five, four, three. All right, I'm taking a guess here because I have no idea. No, 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 no. Hold on. What? What? Oh. You got to answer Finstock, the question, guys. You got to answer. You got three seconds. Three, three seconds, Finstock. Two. Is it the long con? And they've not done it. No, oh! the correct answer is the wire. The winners oh! and new team champions, oh, Team Schmoes. Well, John, I had them at the beginning. It was a lot closer than I anticipated, and they pulled it. I think it was a lot closer than most people anticipated. I knew they could pull that kind of a come comeback. No. Yeah. Nobody saw it coming. It looked like this might have been a walkaway win for the Schmoes. Team B.O.B. represented themselves well. Absolutely. They came back. They thrived. They scored when they needed to, and their probation officers will be very proud of them tonight. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, guys, what an incredible championship Absolutely. match. I was thrilled right down to the wire. Now, let's head out and join Sasha as she interviews both the winning team, the Schmoes and our valiant in defeat losers, Team BOB.
Thank you, gentlemen. I am here with the victors. Was there ever any doubt this is your house? There was a little bit of doubt once uh, Bob Euchre showed his ugly head. But uh, yeah, look, these guys came out. I got to give props to both JTE and Finstock. That was a match. Uh, they, they showed what they have done time in. Uh, again and again and again, these guys show up. So I, I, my hat's off to them. You mean Finstock shows up, totally lucks into it, and JTE smokes a lightning round? That was incredible. That must have made you a little nervous. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, you know, I like the sense of competition here. We didn't want to just be going to the gym and do the elliptical for an easy 20 minutes. We wanted to be pushed to the limit, and they certainly did that, but there was never a doubt in my mind that once we got to round five, we were going to come to play when we needed to hit the shots the most. Well, and then you hit Star Wars, and come on, that was that was fire. Yeah, drawing Star Wars w was great, and I only, I, I just didn't hear the first question right, otherwise I think I would have swept that round pretty well, but um, look, I adjudicated myself well as a Star Wars fan, Christian adjudicated himself well as a Rocky fan, so we both knocked the franchises out of the park that we had to get. Well, you guys, what can you say about these challenges? JTE, he had a long road. He's had a hard road. Poor guy. Uh, he's had a rough couple weeks. You know, he, he, again, put a nice valiant effort against Riley and came up short and then went up against us, came up short. But JT's a guy, he'll be back. But I think what he's going to be doing is leading Finstock to the ring and probably his next match because Finstock is like the top, one of the top contenders right now. Which is still shocking. But how about when he hit Colin Firth? I was not expecting that. I Look, like I said, when JTE really goes into that head, he can pull out the information. And this was a match, a lot of times I think that JTE hasn't really been the star of it. Where Finstock was maybe the last star, the last time he won. JTE was clearly the star of this one. All right, now who do you guys want to take against? What, what's the next bout? What's the next round? Who do you want to take down? I mean, look, as Tom Petty once said, into the great wide open. That's what this category is right now. We are just here waiting for another team to step up and think that they can challenge us at the team movie trivia showdown. Christian, do you have somebody in mind? Yeah, I got somebody for you. Uh, here's what I want, because we got a new team tournament. There's just some people that have records, but there's new teams that have to emerge. Here's what I want you to do. Andy Signor and Dan Merle. I want you guys to put yourselves together into a little team, win a couple matches, and we'll see you when it counts. You heard it here first. Gentlemen, it was a long day. It was a hard battle. Take me through the fight. Freaking Star Wars, man. <laughs> I've been in two title matches, and both times Star Wars has come up by guys who host Star Wars shows. That's eight points and eight points. It's, it's, it's my job of the hut of the Schmodown Galaxy. Every time I think I'm going to get away, it captures me and puts me in carbonite. Well, I mean, how can what can you tell us about carrying this dead weight all the way to the finals? All right, listen, when you carry around Finstock, your your style points go up 100-fold. So he's good to be there just for style points. Uh, listen, he had, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have been here because a couple matches ago, he got manuscript, which I did not know. So if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here in the first place. So I give him credit. I did my best to get us in this fight. We were close. I haven't seen the sting. I don't think anybody in the studio knew that answer. So I'm okay losing on a question like that because it wasn't an easy one. I can say both myself and John Schnepp had no idea. Finstock, this guy had the most incredible lightning round. Were, were you Love. just watching him in pride? Here's the deal. I mean, I'm humbled in defeat. I, I own up to it. You're humbled ever? Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, look. I didn't carry my weight here. Yes, they got Star Wars, but that's just the luck of the draw. Um, the way I look at it is, if I answered three or four more questions, we would have won. This loss is on me, and I'll take it and I'll wear it. I'm a man, I can do that. That's very honorable of you, yeah. my friend. I mean, listen, listen, I want nothing more to beat Christian Harloff and Mark Ellis. Um, couldn't do it. Uh, JT was unbelievable, like, as usual. Now, I'm good for a couple of answers here and there. Unless it's sports movies or whatever. Obviously, I beat Schnepp, and we were in a championship. Um, I don't like finishing second um, in movie trivia or sex, you know, so. Okay, so here's the it. question. How do you build the road back? How do you come back? How do you take them on again? Who do you need to defeat in order to get back here? I gotta go. Some I gotta soul search a little bit. Um, I'm gonna sit back and you know I gotta. I'm still in the singles uh, tournament here. I gotta do some research. I gotta stop like going out and doing you know bad stuff in the community. And when I get back to you know trivia and things like that, I gotta. I gotta. I gotta get some time back in there. I should. There's a lot of questions I should answer. All right. What about you? What do you want next? 
Ah, oh, man. You know, I'm not going to lie. These last two defeats really hurt me. I need to watch some more Star Wars, some more classics, uh, and some more romantic films. I know where my weaknesses are. I need to concentrate on those categories. Even though I did pull the romance in the second fight I did, uh, this, this, listen, the Star Wars questions are going to kill me. I, I would rather get the Star Wars questions, because at least I keep them from getting it. And maybe if I'm lucky, I pull two, maybe three points out of there. I need no Star Wars questions. Yeah, I, I knew none of the questions that was even asked. Like, I was like, I don't know any of that. Live, breathe and eat Star Wars. And it's like, you can't beat people like that. They killed us in that round. It's the same thing that happens in a lot of these rounds when you watch these tournaments. The second round for the two points is the decisive factor. But here's the thing, it was, but then that speed round, you were so clutch and that Colin Firth question was unbelievable. That was, it was, I didn't know he knew it. And I was like, please, let's do it. I don't think he knew he knew it. Did I, you know you know it? To, listen, there's so many characters in that movie. I was just, I just had to do the math. I was like, okay, got Liam Neeson to the kid and all this. So it, it, then I was just like, it's the guy from Kingsman, Colin Firth. I worked it through it through other movies because I couldn't remember his name right away. But yeah, I mean, listen, I, I feel like we get, no one even thought we would even come close. No one thought we would be here. Thing. I mean, look, <laughs> nobody thought we would beat Raka. No, nobody thought we would beat Dennis and this guy. Nobody thought we would beat Schnepp. We, we ran through a, a, a juggernaut. Like, we had the toughest road to the finals, no question about it. Um, Brink of elimination. Right, and you know, I would have loved to get that five uh, point question right. Just put the pressure on the schmoes because Christian was shaking in his boots. His knees were like under the table shaking. And that's why I said, you know, Bob Euchre instead of Bob Barker. Everybody knows that. Well, I will say it's been a long road. It's been a tough road. You guys, we will see you back here. I have no doubt. Back to you, gentlemen. We're still the best. Those were, that was some amazing statements by both the winners and the losers. I'm telling you, I was privileged to sit next to you to watch this match. It was a little difficult for me knowing we'd lost to Team B.O.B., but we couldn't have lost to better, more valiant challengers to the title. And now what happens with the, with the Schmoes being the champions? What team is going to emerge now to take them on as we go down the road? Well, this whole division has opened up a whole lot of possibilities of who we could see come up yeah. and challenge now the Schmoes for their titles, and now they can actually call it their title. I got to tell you, watching that match, as the comeback started to mount, as we got into that speed round and JTE started firing off those answers and you started to believe, and even though they lost, I still believe in BOB. They made believers out of everybody. Absolutely, I think absolutely. JTE was the Rocky. He just kept coming back, kept coming back. It's amazing. Uh, now, I, but what happens? He's a two-time loser. We'll see if he can pick it up. <laughs> uh, it's a lot to carry for one man. I, I don't know how he can do it, but they acquitted themselves well. He has nothing to be ashamed about. Finstock, well, it's another story, but we'll see what happens <laughs> going forward if he can take it in the singles competition because he is starting to become... Well, he pulled off the upset of the century, Absolutely. taking out John Schnepp, which I believe a lot of people lost a, money in, a lot of money in Vegas on. Including and me. And now, and you know, look, they acquitted themselves really well in the Tag Team Championships. Yes. Let's see what Finstock... Do not fall asleep on Finstock can't. in the singles title. Rep. Absolutely. Well, we want to thank everybody for watching us. Uh, hope we brought you one hell of a matchup and one hell of a commentary. Thanks so much, and we will see you all next time on The Schmodown. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.